Well, hey, everybody. Hi, good morning, um, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are. Welcome back to Adobe Live, where F is for friends who do stuff together. That's all of us. Sean, <laughs> today is for you and me. And yeah. N is for any place and anywhere at all down here in the deep blue sea. Um, happy Earth Day, Sean. Yeah, happy Earth Day to you too, man. Um, I totally forgot it was today. That's my bad, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but it works out, it works yeah, out. it works out. Um, what are we working on today? Who are you? Introduce yourself. Let's get the rundown, Sean. All right. So my name is Sean. I am a composite artist and I do uh, just basically co digital composites using photography, uh, 3D objects, vectors, whatever, you name it. I try and merge it all into one image, making it look realistic and or connecting it to a story. Um, so uh, a lot of stuff that I do is like artwork uh, engagement. So it's basically creating communities around art and all that stuff. And uh, this is my side, like little hobby um, that we're going to do today, which is basically recreating uh, SpongeBob's house. So, yes. uh, so yesterday we actually um, created uh, the house itself um, and every, like all the asset or elements and we align them, but we didn't go and like blend anything really, or like make it look real. We were just kind of like setting up most of the, uh, elements. Solid foundation. Uh, That's what we yeah. need. Yeah. Perfect. So we're almost getting to my stage where I would classify it as a rough image. So I know, <laughs> I know you might be thinking, wait, this isn't a rough yet. It's like, no, this is still me setting up the rough. And then I get to a point where I have an overall and then we um, kind of edit that. So yep. would this uh, count as like kind of still concepting, trying to get a like the idea if we weren't work working yeah. off of something that was already done, this is kind of still trying to figure out the concept, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So we're cool. still kind of aligning the perspective and all that. When you're in photography, you're always trying to get that like perfect shot, that perfect perspective. So yep. we're basically trying to form that here uh, using a bunch of elements and stuff. And it's hard because rather than in photography, everything's already placed there. We have to go in and place everything ourselves and then create the shot that we wanted to originally take. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like an advanced photography, uh, which yep. is pretty cool. Uh, um, and for chats, uh, let's do a couple things before we jump in. Mm -hmm. First, Sean, can you just do a down point with me, um, chat? Scroll down. Uh, there's a bunch of information yeah. down below us. Um, you can click on links to get connected with Sean. You can get connected with Pixel Squid. You can get connected with me. Um, there's all kinds of great information down there. And chat, you know my favorite thing to do. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I'm down here in the deep blue sea. Sean, where are you? I'm uh, in Canada, so it's yes. a little bit up higher than the deep blue sea. But. Yes, <laughs> you're in the you're in the deep white snow, from what I hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm in snow. Yeah. Just yes. Full of snow right now. Yes. Yeah, so let's go ahead and hop in. Um, everyone, it's so glad to see you. Thanks for joining us around the world. I'll call out some cool places as we see them uh, come in. But let's go ahead and hop in. We have an artist spotlight today a little bit later, so stick around. Uh, but Sean, take it away. Perfect. All right. So today we are basically going to start here. And what we did was we uh, kind of created our foreground elements here. We have some of the greenery, well, underwater greenery, I guess. Um, and then we've created our pineapple uh, here, which is all all 3D uh, or all 3D assets um, created through the Pixel Squid library. So we started with this pineapple here. We added some some windows here, a door, and then a little uh, the chimney for uh, for a fireplace. I guess I don't know. I get I have never really seen like a fireplace in like the like there, I guess. like a bubble place. I feel like a bubble place would be the next logical thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I still know what this purpose, the purpose of this was for this little tube. But well, I'm sure it, I'm sure it has some use. Yeah. Um, but today we're gonna add some like fish, some bubbles. You know, make it more lively. Um, get in here with our uh, blending and really make it a lot. Um, more realistic. Here's our reference here. So I wanted to show you our reference in the same document. We're going to hide that, of course, while we're editing this, but this is kind of like the destructive side of things. So we put trash everywhere, but 
we're going to kind of like reverse that. We decided yesterday that it was a good idea to make it look like friendly and happy again. So yes. we're, we're going to try and do that. Yes. Intentionally um, planned for Earth Day, right, yes. Sean? Yeah, yeah, we're cleaning up now. <laughs> we're, we're literally showing you how to do it digitally. Yes. So you can do it digitally or in real life if you don't have crazy restrictions like Canada right now. Um, but but yeah, I actually don't even know if we can go outside and clean up anything i don't even yes think and I you wouldn't work. want to go to the ocean right now anyway because no, it's like no. what it's like, like frozen degrees. probably yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't think that thing thaws out until like june so we yes. gotta i gotta wait a little while um so i'm actually going to go on to the um, pixel squid website here because i want to show you how easy it is to add elements into um your library so i've already searched fish uh, and look at how many fish there are. It's like m a massive library. So really, we can add like anything in here. Um, I'm going to throw in fish some... so much. Yeah, it's it's great. And they have a lot of great models on here for fish. It's like one designer was like, I'm going to create every single fish and put it on on, on Pixel Squid. Yes, there's just like trash <laughs> all over his desk and his hair's yeah. messy. He's like, I got to yeah, do some more fish. Pictures of fish <laughs> all over the walls. Yes. Different... Like the pins and the... <laughs> So we're going to add some, I'm going to add a yellow fish only because we're working with the yellow pineapple. So it kind of like creates, you know, you're not adding another color to deal with. Like if I were to add orange, that's kind of like a weird, it's a different color that I'm working with now. So that's going to slow down my editing process a little bit if I don't focus on that. Um, so that's why I'm just going to add yellow fish. <laughs> yep. And we talked about uh, this yesterday, your work, you like to work in color themes kind of mm -hmm. in certain times. And if you guys go to Instagram, check out his work, um, you'll see that it is like gradiented in different color blocks and you can see how the work kind of evolves through different colors. And so I love your taking into consideration, yellow fish, yellow pineapple, make it easy, keep it on brand. Yeah, just uh, balance it out a little bit because it's using that kind of like graphic design, like knowledge in a sense, like you, you think and you're like, uh, okay, like uh, a logo, like normally people just like four colors max. Like if you start to go anything over, it gets more expensive, which is like baller for all those big brands, but like something local isn't going to want to spend like a lot of money on their, on printing their logo all the time. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I just like to keep it, keep it minimal. I think it looks nice when you have two or three colors. You don't have to have anything intense. This red is all right because it's going to be blurred eventually anyway. So you won't really, won't really notice it. And I'll probably change it in raw anyways. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to add some fish here, but I'm going to put it uh, a fish behind uh, the pineapple here. Just one over here because I think that that would create a nice um, depth in a sense. Um, attack so of gonna, the giant fish yeah just a huge thing to, yes I'm just, just just creeping behind here there we go that that that's yep. the real that's the true spongebob right there so it's interesting Actually, with compositing like how much uh scale matters and i know that i've seen artists that will put something small on a composition to make the main thing look bigger and i love here that like putting that giant fish is like oh we're in an aquarium and then we shrink the fish down and it's like okay cool so it's like a large aquarium and we shrink it down more and it's like we're in the ocean now that it like <laughs> becomes depending on scale you can really set the scene mm -hmm. and give more information yeah and i, I just like to uh Sometimes I, I find that it's that it's really also like overdone. Uh, like no offense to anybody who does like those giant animal photos and does it in a landscape. But I really think that that concept has been overdone a lot. Like there's apps that literally are specifically designed just to give you that. So and like I, I like I don't mind it, but I think that like people can do a little bit more, right? Like why hasn't somebody made the whole world smaller? Like the size, like, why is that not a popular thing? Like, yep. I'm not sure if you've seen Grounded, the video game that just recently came out. It's like Ant Bully where they kind of shrunk down the whole world. But why is that not coming up that much? Because that's actually a really interesting perspective, seeing something actually that size rather than making it extremely big in the Photoshop edit and then somebody being like, okay, that's cool. But, you know, I've seen that a few times with like giant whales, giant goldfish, giant 
Tigers, yep. Giants, you know. Yep. Um, Lisa says, uh, Lessa, sorry, Lessa, I think, uh, says, wow, mind is blown right now. I'm a beginner, but now getting hat just opened up uh, a whole lot of sprinkles. Uh, getting that <laughs> opened a whole bunch of sprinkles. Yes, little sprinkle ideas. Uh, and these streams are great to learn things and mm -hmm. get new ideas. There also is a stream right before us um, with our friend, I believe, Paul Tranny, um, who's doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. And those are great places to learn new concepts, but also put them into application. So those happen pretty much every single day. Um, just tune in. I believe it starts at nine o'clock. And then right after the stream is Illustrator with Julia Masalska um, this week. So those are great opportunities to actually learn, get hands on. And here we give you sprinkles, I guess. That's the sprinkle <laughs> yeah, ideas. Little sprinkles, sprinkles of, of uh, seahorses and, and fish and like all that stuff. Yes. Um, I also went into um, Adobe uh, Stock there and downloaded um, just some uh, light uh, rays and stuff um, rather than Interesting. Me recreating it. But I want to show you um, two different concepts. So I want to show you how to use obviously a stock image, which is just, you know, we'll, we'll drag this on and I'll, and I'll, you know, we'll just overlay it or something. Uh, this is kind of like the easy way to do it, you know, um, setting it up this way or something. And then you would adjust all of your, uh, you know, uh, opacity and everything. Sorry, I'm getting stuck on words there. Um, but I find that this has, almost like no control because now like you know i have to go in and, and erase a bunch of stuff and all that um so i'm actually not going to use that i just licensed that image literally to show you that purpose um, i love that but, <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to um show you how you can actually create a light uh drop which is basically i'm going to um just create a brush like this um, and then I'm going to squish it. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I've literally never even thought about that of no. making a library with like a squished brush. I've <laughs> always tried to like draw it in and taper it. I, oh my gosh, it's no. the most simple thing and my brain is exploding. Here's how you make it look like a real light ray though. So as you notice, um, if you look at the right light rays, one side is sharp and one side is not sharp. So okay. right here, you can see a sharp line cutting through, but then all this right here is blurred out as the line, as the ray. So you have to actually cut this down here in a sense. So you would cut the bottom part, making it sharp, and then you would stretch out your light ray. You know those days when you just feel like, I don't think I've ever designed before, that's happening to me right now. I was like, I don't think I've ever used Photoshop in this in this moment. I'm learning that I have never had any concept of design. This is amazing. <laughs> so you would basically just kind of create that. I'm going to uh, blur out that uh, sharp edge again, just so that it doesn't make it so intense. But, uh, but yeah, so that's how you would kind of like create light rays. Uh, so now you have way more control, right? You have one light ray. You can just, you know, start messing with it just bring bring them over you can thicken them up again because you've cut it so that it made it you know straight on one side yep and um, because you're blurring it you don't have to worry about pixelation mm -hmm. yeah and then you can just bring them all all down i'm gonna put this light ray kind of ahead because i'm gonna see how we had a little bit of light over here so that's that's where that light ray is basically pointing down um from that point and oh, that's interesting to up take the light reference from the objects and be like, oh, we don't need to like find light. We'll just create light to that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you notice inside, underwater, the lighting is is not, it's, it's actually very, uh, you can't determine it um, really because a wave could go over the water, which is like a cylinder in a sense, going over top of a flat surface. And if light hits a cylinder, it's not going to go straight through. Um, it's going to bounce in all these different areas and all yeah. these different light rays. So when it comes down to all this, it was probably just one light ray that actually hit the surface of this, but it split into all these different things and magnifying it in all these different locations. So the lighting underwater is consistently changing even more than above 
like in when yep. in where we are um which is fantastic never... for a compositor to be like who cares about the light it's whatever we want it to be <laughs> yeah it's whatever we want it to be in this sense um you can kind of design it you know yourself um uh, which is nice like i like playing with light i think that that's like the coolest part of design um in a sense uh is is light and uh just the power that it has you know the fact that it can replicate a lot of um your tones your colors your shape of things um i'm not sure if anybody's ever seen um banta black before um so here is an example of something with light oh yeah and something without light so you can see the importance and when i say like that you can never take light out of a piece of artwork this is the exact reason why there's nothing there anymore it's yep. a hole <laughs> so this is kind of a cool reference as to why i studied it right and you can even use this as to what the power of light does right these are all highlights in here you, the highlight right here showing texture bringing it out you don't see it here right yep. so you can kind of study the difference between these two things and uh yeah that's uh it's kind of yeah. an interesting color because it absorbs i think like 99.8 percent light or something crazy yep. and yeah. we talked about that yesterday that like when you're doing compositing like never use 100 percent black because that happens right that you get yeah. this <laughs> unnatural black if you use like a 95 percent black you're like okay cool there's at least some shade there but like if we had a like vanta painted pineapple it's just like there's no way that that color would exist in the real world yeah it's just oh bmw has a car in vanta but oh my gosh yes i <laughs> it's that's like intense um like you would how what would it even look like driving it like at you it would just literally look like a Invisible. hole in the world just yes. getting bigger and bigger and you'd be like uh i don't like that <laughs> i saw a black hole driving at me at like very fast right the That's thing that amazing. always gets me at night is when two motorcycles are driving behind me and it looks like a car and then one of them turns yes. like my brain just yeah. like slowly yeah, breaks like down <laughs> What just happened? <laughs> exactly. Car broke in half. Isn't there like that um, hill that like vehicles disappear on or something like that too? That it's called like ghost hill and they, it, you go up and down and then all of a sudden headlights disappear at night. You can't see it anymore. They just oh. go like completely gone. It oh, only yeah, that, that, sounds, night. that sounds creepy. Yeah. There's also the road where like it, it's built to go up, but like or it's built up, but then things roll up it rather than down it's weird Ooh, mystery yeah. um so we're using a lot of adjustment layers here um yeah. as we like keep adding stuff can you kind of talk talk us through about what adjustments you're making because i know a lot of people think that compositing is a lot of like brushing stuff in a lot of masking but a lot of times it's just adjustment layers and colors and that kind of stuff so as we work through that can you take us through like the steps yeah. to whatever the next thing is so whenever a background is completely black like this to remove that black like completely you would go inside this section here in the adjustment layers uh if you want to remove white then you go in in this section i'm not sure the technical stuff because i'm like completely self-taught in photoshop like i've yep. never really learned from that many people so that's all i know is that like this adjusts white for me and it varies based off of um different contrasts and different colors and all that and this does the black so normally when yeah. i find like an overlay then i'll just do uh i'll set it to screen or lighten depending on the texture in this case we're going to use screen because it brings in a little bit more of the um bubbles but i'm not using this big thing because that's more of like a fish tank bubble yep something coming from a, a filter system. So I'm only really going to be using the bubbles uh, yep. side there. <laughs> and it's funny, the blending modes, I refer to them the same way. So I call the top section darkeners and then the next section lighteners. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, just, there's those. And I looked up one day, I was teaching an illustrator uh, tutorial and I was like, I want to know what these actually are. And it's like so mathematical that it's like, here's I... the formula equation that's happening with the pixel values when you set it to <laughs> multiply. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so insane. <laughs> like what's what's under the hood here? It's so much more advanced than than we think it is. Yep. And yet I'm just like, yeah, that's just if the image is all black, then you use that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're super helpful. Like the layer modes are honestly 
probably one of the most helpful things that I utilize um, yes. in my pieces. It and does get rid of a lot of cropping, which is nice. Um, yes. And I think that last year, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years, who knows how time passes anymore. Um, they added the live previews because it used to be to like click through each one. And now like as you hover at live previews and that was a world changer for me because it's like, oh, cool. I don't have to click through every single one every time. I can just be like, scroll through that one, please. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, what, what whenever Photoshop makes something easier for me, I'm just like, yes, you are the best. Yeah, it's just because you get you get so familiar with how you do things, and sometimes you don't want to get off of that process, even though you know that there are so many more useful things. It's just what you were kind of trained with, and you just don't want to get rid of it. But then Photoshop yep. added the sky replacement, and you're like, wow, <laughs> that's a game yep. changer right there. Sky replacement, I don't even use it for skies. I literally can use it to automatically mask things most of the time. If you have oh, a white yeah. background or a stock photo, you can literally put that through the sky replacement, get rid of the, the white around the, the border, and then use the mask that it automatically generates and just get rid of the picture That's behind so smart. it. And you basically have an AI cutting out images for you. Yep. And yeah. Lessa, I'm not sure what Multiply does to an image still. So technically, here's the rundown. Multiply is actually doing Multiply. So it's taking the color values of those pixels, the numbers that you see if you go into the color pixel or the color picker, and it is multiplying those together to then come up with a new one, which means that the color will always be darker because the values are getting increased. So multiply always makes it darker and it makes it look like the colors are interacting because the values are multiplying with each other um, in like a mathematical sense. So it basically combines two colors like they're inks is how I describe it. Okay, so now I just kind of added um, my uh, lighting again. That same blue layer we're literally recycling and reusing over and over again. That's just the tones. It's the easiest way probably to get, especially if you have a flat background, like what we're using, which is blue, it's the easiest way to bring your tones back uh, in a sense. And what's so, happening with all those little arrows? So like we have a bunch of layers, but a lot of them have little arrows. Can you explain kind of why those have yeah. arrows? So this is actually um, clip masking. So it basically means that this object will not leave this shape at all whatever it's arrowed down to so all these arrows are pointing down to this which means that they will never escape this it's a yep. clip mask you can right click your layers on top you would create that clip mask and then that would basically go into that object super helpful for typography or something when you're trying to do like letters and you don't want to you know cut out all the letters individually which is yes. what i did when i first started i'm like how does anybody have the time to do this and then i discovered clip mask and i'm like wow that's how they have the time um it's basically like if you want this fish like a completely different texture but you don't want everything else a completely different texture you can easily uh let me just find the fish here sorry i am t i have so many layers right now that sometimes that's how you know it's fine. good that's so, how you know it's good <laughs> so if we want to tur turn this fish like red right but we don't want to turn everything else red that would be a clip mask so see how i i click over here a paint bucket so this whole box in here is actually red right now but it's only taking the shape of the fish because it's clip mask into it so hopefully that was a good um description but this would be like if you were to you know want to change it you just do like color or something yep. like that right and then oh one fish two fish point. red fish uh yellow fish blue fish or <laughs> <laughs> accidental dr seuss is the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i am now going to um i'm going to try and make a walkway here uh, because in our reference if you've noticed that uh, we had kind of a little bit of a, a gravel walkway which is you know realistic that's what i had kind of a, a walkway up to the house maybe we'll add a mailbox who knows we were upgrading you know renovating his house a little bit we, may, we might be able to find a mailbox on pixel yes. squid but for now let's do let's quickly do that uh, walkway so what i'm going to do is i am going to grab all of these and i basically start to group them so uh, i'm going to do pineapple and this is only because it, it starts to sort out my document a little bit more yes um and it's easier for me to navigate around uh, what 
grouping is that? Okay. Yes. It's the appearance of organization without like having to actually name everything. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. It looks like. And then at the end, sometimes I just grab all these and then I just name it no C. <laughs> so that yes. nobody goes in and looks at it because it's probably a mess. <laughs> So I am going to go into Pixel Squid here. Just going to open it up quickly. And I believe that I have some gravel in here. Um, so we're going to put it behind the, the plants here. Um, so we're going to start our uh, walkway in between these two layers. And I believe I have some dirt here. Perfect. Oh, hopefully it doesn't add that. Okay, perfect. So just a little patch of rubble, which is cool. Um, I find that patches of things are really easy to work with compared to just having the element already there. Um, so are we I, going to use the patch and then mask in the path from the patch? No, we're going to just probably use the patch oh, still, but yeah. we're going to use two to show you a different perspective. So one patch is going to be close to the door and I'm going to just squish it a little bit and give it that distance appeal. Um, so we're going to put that there. Just gonna put it actually behind the house there. Perfect. Oh, and you had the shadows on the house already. So it just blended right in there. That's organization yeah. right there. Just nicely. Uh, I'm gonna prop it up like this a little bit just to give it that under the door kind of um, look. Perfect. And now I'm going to bring in another one. Um, and this one's going to be in the foreground. So, which is going to be a little bit more blurred. Yep. Um, and that's what creates the two different levels now. So I'm picturing my image in three segments, the middle being what's in focus, the background, not in focus and the foreground that is not in focus either. So everything in this middle section will be like you know spongebob house all this kind of stuff and they're all done by groups if you uh can see here so we have our background here uh so we can always replace that 100 percent because we have everything uh kind of aligned and ready to go uh non-destructively yep um but yeah so now we we have we can know that there's three different se uh, sections so it's easier to merge and blend uh elements in so I'm going to grab uh, just another one, uh, just some more rubble here, and it's going to go right uh, up here, um, but it's going to be ahead of um, this segment. And it's going to be a little bit more like big and blurred um, because it's closer in a sense. Um, which allows us again to get perspective without, well, it's allowing us to give depth because we can get perspectives, but getting depth in something is tough and being having the fish in the background, the plants in the foreground, another layer now with the path uh, is helping us to get more and more depth. And I love that we're kind of paying attention to like the blurring, the sizing, that it just makes it feel so much deeper. Mm -hmm. And then I would grab, um, basically uh these two elements and i would just grab that blue and, and put it into uh them again i notice how i'm not really like i'm just clip masking it over and over again into these elements uh i'm not like doing anything fancy uh, i like to make my editing process as simplistic as possible my head's yep. already got a lot going on in it so it's best to uh make it as easy as possible um and reusing stuff is like the easiest way uh, most of the time. I watch all those DUI videos with people reusing all these this plastic trash and all that stuff into new things. And I'm like, dang, that's that's crazy. How did, how did they even think of that stuff? Um, so I'm a huge fan of those videos. Um, but I apply that same concept to my editing process, right? The DUI kind of style of things yep, where yep. you um, have to kind of like reuse a lot of your stuff. Like there's no point of recreating um, everything when you've already uh, done it. Even with it in traditional, it's possible, right? You can use a light table or a window and trace that out. And now you have that element. Yep. Basically in all of your pieces, you can keep tracing it into a new 
traditional piece, like a tree or something, right? That's smart. It's using, it's working efficient, efficiently. Yep. Um, and uh, Fury has a question. Yeah. Uh, who's your favorite composite artist? Do you have any other artists that you follow that are inspirations? Uh, I, well, I don't really like, like I, I love composite artists for sure, but my, the, the artist that I would like the most, and I know it seems like, you know, like I'm, I'm hopping on a bandwagon, but Banksy would probably be one of my favorite artists. And yep. it's just because of the meanings that he puts into, um, his pieces. Von, uh, Wong is actually starting to become one of my favorites as well. They do a lot, um, towards helping, uh, the community. I actually recently talked to Von. Um, which is cool. So I had, um, I got to learn how they did, did a lot of their process. They do things with like, they grab a lot of um, recycling, like in real life, uh, all these things and build huge sculptures in real life oh, like, that's with, right. uh, with the sculptures. Yeah. So Vaughn is, uh, he's got some pretty intense work. Um, that's cool. Like the idea of pushing the concepts and being inspired by people that are more conceptual. And I love that that like resonates with you and you're like, cool, that's the zone that I like is the concept, the message. And so I found inspirations that match that. Um, and you know, you don't feel pressured to be like, oh, I have to like this person or that person. It's like, oh no, I like these people because they are doing the thing that I love as well. Mm -hmm. I find that that just kind of, at the end of the day, it just, it's just nicer. Uh, I, I like to be a fan of someone's artwork and what they and what they do and, and and all that stuff rather than become like a fan of just them in general like yep. i like i am a fan of people for sure don't get me wrong i love people but um sometimes i just you know i like to just look at artwork and i feel like that connects with me a little bit uh more than um yeah just uh you know browsing through instagram looking through the feed and 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 just following random artists because they had one piece or, or something and it would went like had all these likes or something. And I'm like, it doesn't really matter to me all the likes. Um, yep. At the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, if people actually see your work um, and actually can connect with it, you know? Um, yep, absolutely. Um, chat, a little announcement for you that I forgot to do at the beginning of stream. Um, if you're, if you're in chat and you're just typing away and you're looking around the screen and there's a bunch of like red things, um, you're probably in the wrong place. You're probably hanging out on YouTube. You want to look around and see a bunch of blue things, uh, over on Behance. So come on over be.net slash live, um, and click through to the chats. Um, we love you on YouTube, but we also love you more, uh, on Behance. And that's where the chat is. That's where the party is. We've got Steve Festus Kossaboom here. How would you not want to hang out with Steve? Yeah. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, come over to Behance, leave me a red heart uh, in the chat to let me know that you're coming from YouTube and we'll send you some love. My fairy says my laptop would explode with that many layers. Uh, it does seem like we're handling things pretty well with the amount of layers that we're stacking here. I love it. Yeah, it's uh well, my computer is built for rendering and stuff yep. like that, really. So at the end of the day, like it's got a lot of processing power. Uh, processing, processing. I don't know. <laughs> That's I, whenever I say that on literally stream, either. Yes. Somebody says that they're like, you said that wrong. <laughs> I'm like, I, do, I know. Do you have one of the computers with like all like the rainbow lights and all that stuff? Yeah, I actually have a laptop, to be totally honest. This is yes. uh, we're actually be, like I'm running my full dual uh dual screen monitor setup off of a laptop that's um, crazy it's got a 4.6 second startup time with photoshop ai and after effects as a startup file that's um, awesome yeah it's pretty it's pretty good um but sometimes it does lag because i do have um 12 usbs plugged into it <laughs> i uh I do a lot of like texture work, uh, especially in Illustrator, which when you get into like texture texture work, it's like, oh boy. And I, they did some updates, um, I believe this year around Max to Illustrator to help with efficiency and speed things up. And I have like zero problems now. And it has been the biggest joy in my life to like finish up Max. And they're like, here are all these new things, you know, performance improvements. And then I jump in and things are just like lightning quick. And I'm like, oh, so much time is being saved. Thank you, Adobe. <laughs> the sensei I, has come through. <laughs> I personally love looking at the sneaks. Um, oh, yeah. That was nuts. Like the physics whiz, all that stuff. Like 
whenever that comes out, I'm not, like I'm gonna be using all that stuff. The physics wits for the 3D, the fact that you don't really need to like align like anything anymore really um yep. it, it just kind of like touches other elements when you're just dragging it that's really cool um i think that that is uh, gonna be a game changer or the scantastic where you could that person scammed the shoe and it yes. literally made it a 3d model i'm like just yep. mind was blown at that point i'm like i don't yes. even know how like everybody's gonna become a professional designer now right um, so when we're building here, um, composition, right. Is something that we're always paying attention to trying to keep it balanced. Um, are you kind of just like feeling out, we need something here. Maybe we need something there or is there a run to the reason? Yeah. So right now I'm just kind of like placing things just to create like this as the main, um, focus. These are probably going to be blurred later on, um, the bottom and or the top. Um, it's just, Right now, I'm just kind of placing them um, just to get that kind of like, you know, what I want to overall see in the composite. And then once I've kind of laid out most of these elements, then I'm just like, all right, let's start like the actual editing process, all that stuff and and all the blending. Um, I, I, I thought of something actually while you said that. I'm going to throw in some rocks behind here because that would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, again, we're just playing with depth here, talking about blurring things eventually, is we have like the foundations. Again, we're like concepting, trying to get like the foundation built and thinking, oh, we need some more dimension here. Eventually I'll blur this out in the background so it feels further away. Let's add some rocks. Those will probably get blurred eventually as well. That we're still kind of finding, how do we get the depth? How do we get the composition? How do all the pieces fit in? And then we go in and fix them. Yeah, and then uh, so right now we can actually probably uh, blur this one because this one's pretty pretty close to the front here, and we don't want it like as as focused. So I'm just gonna kind of like really give this one um, a blur, um, only because it's like moving as well. Like, yeah, keep that in mind. Like it's moving forward and and all that stuff. So even this one will be a little bit blurry. Um, when it comes down to composites, I try not to have any sharp lines. So if you notice, like this is still a really sharp line. Smart. Yep. Uh, this is all. These are also really sharp. Like these five or six black lines here. I know it's really small detail, but, but like uh, that to me is like something that I'm just like, yeah, no, it can't have. Yep. So um, anytime that I'm working with type in Photoshop, I blur it by 0. 0.4 because I'm like, I can't have these sharp edges. I need just a little <laughs> yep. bit of texture. So it feels a little bit more organic. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I a hundred percent resonate with that. And you can use my, um, that technique that I taught you yesterday with, uh, the helping of the, uh, blurred edges. So let yes. me just find my fish here, wherever I put that. Um, where did I put my fat fish? Maybe I put it in the back background by accident. Background file. Oh yeah, I did. All right. So that's where <laughs> that's where my that's, layer organization. Could that's oh yeah. I was say that's uh, how we have that repository of just like files. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna just do my that same technique where selecting inverse and then uh, I'm gonna just hide the uh, selection. So now it creates that mask um, around it, and then I'm just gonna go in with the blur tool and fix this uh, the edge here. And here we're blurring the mask, blurring the object. And so the object stays super clean and clear, but we're blurring the mask, which again, we're working non-destructive workflow. Um, this is like a great, great hack. Um, I'm learning so much from you, Sean. This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all just randomly me stumbling across stuff. So um, there's so many things that you can learn in Photoshop. Like it's, inten like, it's intense um, how real the software can can really get um just by just by moving things right like just that layer order that i just did what that changes everything almost yep. um and bringing it back again that's show that's like showing like different levels of of things um i'm not sure how i feel about this seahorse i don't think i want to put the seahorse in there i think i'm gonna put um something a little bit more Aww, actually the seahorse might be too small
also chat just because i i have to do it can we name our fish please um chat can you give yeah. us some names for these fish uh yeah you, you gotta do that you yeah. gotta name the fish we could... it, it feels right yeah um fairy asks a, a interesting question are you like a night owl sean or do you are you like bed early or are you the typical I, creative I like 3 a.m ever since a year ago time is just like a weird concept to me yes. uh, and i think everybody can just admit that um it used to be good i used to be a really good um like i used to wake up early in the mornings and be like all ready to go um but now i'm just like I wake up and I don't like, it's not at the same time every day. Um, yep. It's just kind of bounces depending on the jobs, what I'm, what I'm doing that day, all the stuff. If uh, I need to do any updates on the discord uh, community or anything like that. Um, it could, yep. it could yep. just depend on that. But yeah, yep. ever since a year ago, I have no concept of time whatsoever um i'm the same way i've got blackout curtains because i'm my bedroom is basically the studio so i've got the studio lights with the blackout curtains and so at some point uh i'll stream at night or i'll do something at night where i'm doing a talk or something and i turn off my lights and go to open the window and i'm like oh it's oh it's dark outside <laughs> <laughs> it's actually dark outside yes <laughs> that's funny yeah i, I I have um, some blackout um, stuff too. I actually just use like pillowcases because Smart. the window is just like no height at all. And if you want to buy like um, a, a, just a curtain for that, it's just a price that you don't really want to spend on uh, <laughs> on a small window that you never see really. Yep. Um, Steve has named one of our fish Lemony. I lemony. like that. Yeah, like a, a Lemony one. Snicket. That's a really good one. I'm actually gonna yeah i'm i'm just a little confused with this seahorse to be totally honest it's just a weird perspective to me uh i think i might just blur it in the background here like really small <laughs> i love that sorry um you made the cast but you're gonna be like background ensemble yeah, like, like you're here that. but like let's not let's not make it a big thing yeah let's not make it a big deal let's not talk about it <laughs> it's not here, but yeah it's more of an ornament than anything but you, but you help so much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You still get the trophy. You still get the ribbon. Like, thanks for being a part of our composite. Yeah. Thanks for participating today. So yeah. there again, we're just adjusting values, right? Everything we're doing here, because we have that blue wash going over it, um, it's just a lot of values of, is it too dark? Is it too bright? Are the highlights too poppy? Um, of trying to figure out what's the value that feels right. And then we can go in and paint in the highlights and the lights later. Yeah. And I am going to just start adjusting like the, uh, the actual like depth of these um, elements here. Yep. So I'm not sure if you've uh, noticed the difference with that. So there's before kind of looked a little bit flat and now we're creating a little bit more of a 3d um, element to it. Yeah. A little bit of that, like, HDR, HDR like grittiness that's a key word is HDR whenever you I, I, I personally like the whole HD kind of like high quality stuff I oh, yeah. really like to achieve that normally in camera raw though to be totally honest yep um so for and reference that would be like, mm -hmm. yeah for reference chat HDR stands for high dynamic range and it basically just makes it so that uh, it feels like your colors and shadows and highlights, everything just gets way more rich and feels like more intense. So you can see on the left here for the reference, that's got what I would consider like an HDR-ness to it, that it's got just like this contrast, gorgeous colors, big hits. Uh, and then on the right, we're still kind of in, there are shadows or highlights, there are colors, um, but really giving it that depth uh, is what we're referencing here. Mm -hmm. hey, so then, welcome to the stream. spectate my work all the time I, you say it better you, you say it better than i do <laughs> <laughs> i i definitely want to get one of those like sports announcer like big headsets oh, for these that. streams like, oh, right, so, <laughs> golf announcer he's going to be doing some hue and saturation layers um let's watch <laughs> as he adjusts the lightness <laughs> I actually would love to see a stream like that where you literally have to, the other person says nothing. You yes, have yeah. to 
interpret everything that they're doing oh i love that <laughs> that would be a good stream actually yes we actually have a, a new format coming up um I believe at some point next month that we will be doing a photo composite, but the twist will be that I'll be making a source file. And on the first day, an artist will be reimagining that source file. And then on the second day, a different artist will be taking the artist before source file and ping ponging to something new. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so that will be a lot of that commentary. I feel hopefully very much like a sports match. So I'm just going to rasterize some of these layers. These are overlays, so I really don't need to, um, I don't really need to go back and edit them because I know that I'm probably going to be erasing most of these bubbles anyways. Uh, I'm just kind of positioning them here and there just to add texture to yep. the uh, the emptiness of the, of the ocean. Um, we'll probably bring some more bubbles up here and all that kind of stuff after. Um, but right now I want to add something just small here to fix, uh, the shadowing there. Yep. Um, I love how focused you are and how many times I've heard you say like, oh, here's this thing. We'll come back to that later. Here's what we're going to do. And you just put a pin in it and you're like, all right, <laughs> here's what we're focused on now. Um, I love because it keeps you focused on like progressively making it better, but then also c constantly gives you something to do. So you never get stuck with like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. That's like, oh, I have four things in my brain of what I'm doing next. Let's focus on what we're doing now. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's get it. It's kind of me telling myself that, you know what you're doing, man. You, you got this. <laughs> you got this. You, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You've got it now. You've got it in the future. Like everything. We just, yeah, <laughs> we need Sean's mindset for every day. Like we wake up and Sean's just like, hey guys, you got it now. You got, you got it in the future. <laughs> you got this in general. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's just a good being a positive thinker. I think it just comes from uh, being Canadian too. Uh, just follows. Um, That's fair. Yes. You you kind of deal with uh, a lot of random conversations at con uh, grocery stores uh, about random things, and then you just kind of have to like smile and wave like those penguins, like you know, <laughs> like like yeah, cool. Oh, little penguin waves. I just thought about penguins waving and I got so excited. They're just so cute in my brain. I know. Penguins <laughs> are the greatest thing ever. I don't know. Nobody could say anything out otherwise. <laughs> yes. That's one of the things that like once lockdown's over, like the first thing I want to do, a lot of people are like, oh, I want to go to the beach and go party or whatever. I'm like, I want to go to an aquarium and just like sit in a penguin tank for like seven hours. Like that's all yeah. that I want. <laughs> yeah. That'd be, uh, that'd be amazing. Absolutely amazing hang out with the squad yes and do you have so at this point i've watched you do you like a bunch of like exposure adjustments clip the layer add a layer clip the layer is your brain not even thinking like you're just like cool i know what i have to do here and you're just like you have yeah. those processes that you just do over and over yeah so that's the stuff that i can't really like teach because it just it's so stuck in my head now yep. um from redoing it for like 10 years like over and over and over and over again um so this is just me literally clicking a, a brush just to darken specific areas to bring yep. it back again. Um, and I'm only doing that because um, so I can literally replace it again. Um, it's not really like um, it's kind of me setting up my future self at all times. Um, which is what you were talking about earlier, how I like to mention, oh, I'll do that later, right? So that's yep. me setting myself up again. I always think that setting yourself up um, is definitely key. Uh, you definitely want to set yourself up for, um, you know, set up the fu your future self because it just gets you further um, when you're editing things. Um, Absolutely. And uh, just for reference, we've got a little bit over a half hour-ish left. Um, and then we're going to do a artist spotlight. Um, today, our artist spotlight is Fairy. I believe I'm pronouncing that. Do you know if we pronounce it differently? Uh, I know you're Fairy. in chat, so, so let nice. us know if it's yeah. different. But we are going to do artist highlight in about uh, 40, th 39 minutes. Um, and then we'll come back, kind of keep working on this, come back to that after the artist spotlight, uh, and then wrap up for the day. Uh, but stick around. There's a lot of great content coming in the next uh, hour or so. So hang out with us. So sometimes I like to, you know, go, uh, I'm not sure if anybody's ever played with the uh, color lookup um, 
tables. Oh, teach me. I have no idea. Teach me. So the color lookup tables are basically something uh, when you create all these adjustments, you uh, adjustment layers over a, a photograph or something, you can actually export that whole color correction and apply it to any single, any other image you ever want to. Uh, you can apply it to video. You can use it on OBS during your live streams. You can literally use it for absolutely everything. It's a LUT file. Um, so I created my own. I'm going to just load it up here um, inside my folder. So it's called Alvo. And basically what it does is it adjusts like the blues and stuff and creates um, this color tone. Um, so this is before and this is after. Um, I don't use it intensely like this but it's a tool so that i can use like you know soft light and all that and this is really adjusting a lot of my depth now by itself yep. i was gonna say it's great for like flattening the image and then like if you're doing darkenings like that that it gives you like just the shadows just the highlights um and kind of like even it out and then even tossing like color adjustments on top of that like dropping a full color on top of it. like it gives it that baseline to be able to work off of which is amazing i've never mm -hmm. even seen these before oh yeah what's uh I, I mostly use them in after effects um but a lot of people sell them and all that stuff online um and you can get uh, you can use them in Lightroom and all that stuff. Sometimes people like to sell them as like all these packs, but really you don't need to buy them. <laughs> like they're, you can make them yourself. Like they're most useful when you make them yourself uh, at the end of the day. Um, this is just a color tone that I made like a long time ago. I might not even apply it or anything like that, but I do like to look at what it can achieve to my images and if it's going to assist me in any way um sometimes it might not sometimes it might um this one's probably it might be a little bit too uh blue because this is working off of a blue tone so it's really mm -hmm. not complementing it it's more overpowering it in the sense um so you can always go to like your fuji ones which adds orange um here i'll show you uh it adds kind of like um an orangey kind of maybe I have the wrong. There's so many Fuji ones. Ooh. Uh, and as we look for this, yes, in chat, nominate someone. If you have a friend that you'd love to see highlighted for a creative spotlight, um, or if you have someone that you just love their work, go ahead and nominate them in chat. Uh, let us know. Uh, and I believe you also can join in on the Photoshop Discord. There is a Ooh. link that should be floating right above chat. Oh gosh, where am I? Okay, I'm here. It should be over that there. way yeah. other way Wait, no. that way that way yeah. yes um so if you guys want to sign up for the discord you can uh, hang out in there say hi uh, and you can nominate people in chat in discord um let us know who you want to see so i'm going to grab a blue here but then i'm also going to make it light um because i'm i'm trying to adjust my lighting in here and i didn't really want that deep blue i need something lighter since i'm using overlay so that basically takes that lightness and, and steps it down a little bit. So I'm already stepping it up prior so that it's not going to do that for me. And then when I click, now see how it starts bringing things together like nicely in like the corners and all that. And you can just do um, like overlay soft light and then it starts getting, uh, starts slowly merging all of your, uh, all of your colors together, making it blend nicely. And Wade is saying uh, LUTs are intended to match camera types, literally matching the effect for that camera exposing on film. Interesting. So it's like profiles in Lightroom that it's like, this is in theory, if this was a photo and you expose it on this camera, this kind of film, this is what it would look like. Yep. You got it. I, uh, yeah, I don't really know the technical term behind a lot of these things. I find, because I've worked in so many different companies that they've actually just called it something completely different anyways. So yep. really at the end of the day, I think you can almost call everything a thingy or thinger and everybody will understand if they if they know like yes. a path or process or yep. something. I reference so many <laughs> things as like sound effects that I'm like, oh, the little like me thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, I get that. I'm just making this eye a little bit uh, a little bit brighter in a sense because underwater it wouldn't be like 
pitch black, right? Because that was our darkest point. Um, I'll, I'll hide that. So see how this kind of like creates like a hole in the image? Like it looked like you kind of like burnt, burned the image in this spot. Yep. It's because no other black in this image is that is that tone. Yep. So that's why it's, it looks weird. It's jarring um, because it looks like the fish is in the background, but its eye is in the foreground somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's wait, what happened like, here? <laughs> go, go gadget eye. Yes. Just send it to the front. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of going to basically uh, make it just a little bit, you know, uh, lighter. Oh, uh, my Photoshop got stuck on a sizing lock. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So see how it's kind of like a little bit of a lighter tone now, a little bit more in the back there. Uh, nicely. Uh, so we're going, I'm just going to bring some of those bubbles that we had down here. But I'm going to bring, like, make them huge. Just massive. Big bubbles. Because sometimes you need some like massive bubbles, you know? Bubbles. I oh, mean, every time that something like that happens on stream to where we're goofing off, I just want clips so bad of like God, just just the context of us going bubbles. <laughs> just gifts, just a yeah, bunch of Exactly, and yes. Stuff. And again, we're adding more dimension that now we have another layer that's even closer to us. So it's feeling more and more real. Um, I think if you don't have enough layers of depth, it looks like it's not real because the real world always has so many layers of depth. And I love yeah, it just like, like add more, add more, add more. Huge. And uh, I'm just going to hide my reference here. Actually, I'm just going to delete my reference. Um, oh, I locked it uh, just because we probably don't need it anymore at this point. It's almost going to throw me off and start making me design in that route again. So yeah. I like to get rid of it at this point. Um, and then we'll just go back to our original uh, edit here. See you later, old old edit. Um, and we're going to, I'm basically just going to uh, grab all of this now, all in one. And I am going to duplicate and create um, merge down. Uh, control E. Control E. Oh yeah, that's wow. So, and, and then I'm going to convert to smart object. Cool. Um, and then now, basically, this is our whole edit here. So again, uh, it's best just to. hide that um because you don't really need it anymore and then we're going to go into camera raw now yes. uh, actually before that i'm going to go into liquify because i'm going to fix some of my like perspectives and stuff so now that we have a full kind of like base image to work with um oh i forgot to crop it one sec sorry <laughs> that's one thing don't I'm forget to crop that's oh. a huge um we were, that was the carryover of chaotic energy from yesterday. That's like the aftershock. We just needed a little bit of craziness. It, <laughs> yeah. It's always fun too when that happens and you get to see like what's actually happening with your composite and you're like, this is totally insane. And somehow when we cut it right into that artboard, everything looks great. Like that's all we need is we just need to see the artboard. I don't know why it's not letting me crop my artboard. Um, and thanks, Paco, in the studio for uh, tossing up our Artist Spotlight countdown. Um, that is coming up in that many minutes and that many seconds. If you want to stick around, it's going to be a great time. We're going to look at some of Fairy's work. I'm going to hang out. If you want to nominate someone, you can nominate someone. Uh, put them in chat. Put them in Discord. And then after the stream, you can stick around um, at uh, 11... 30, yes, for Julia Mascal says uh, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. And then at 12, uh, our friend Anna and James uh, will be doing some post process um, on video so you can hang out uh, check out some cool stuff from premiere and how to create this is this is the the term thumb stopping content. Ooh, I love thumb that stop, thumb right stopping. thumb stopping. Who cares about eye catching when you can be thumb stopping. A thumbs up or yeah. So it sounds like a band I was, name. I wasn't able to crop for some uh, reasons, probably because I'm using artboards, which is weird because normally I'm able to crop with an artboard, um, but no idea. So I'm just going, let's just focus on this area here. And Why not? Will, yeah, it'll it'll make sense. But it's kind of cool how you can see like everything. Yeah. 
know? and the amount and of toning, especially on that coral, seeing like, oh, this was so off from what our composition was, and we pulled it in so well. Yeah, this is a huge zoom. Look at 8.1%. Yes. Crazy. So we're going to go wild. like a little bit lower right here. Um, there, we'll look at it there. So I'm going to um, basically, uh, oh yes, I was going to go into liquify first. This is so that I can just start doing a little bit of my perspective at the bottom here. Uh, let's zoom up onto our actual uh, piece, which is right here. And this is when I start doing like smaller adjustments, uh, just moving and pushing and, and all that. And it seems to, you know, start to form a little bit more, um, like towards what we're trying to uh, achieve, which is like a roundness kind of around yep. the, the center point. So I just kind of just move um, just a bunch of like stuff here and there. There's no like really, I'm not really using like any strategy behind this. Um, and especially with water, it can be so distorted depending on how the waves are. What Like it all can kind of just be a little bit organic, um, which makes it a little fun. I love liquify. It's the most satisfying thing I to know. like watch someone liquify a photo. I know liquifying is like my all time favorite thing tool yep. probably. I remember the amount of uh, back when I was in design school and we we're doing photography of like liquefying like portraits of people. And it's so weird how like, you know, you, you're like doing like a beauty magazine cover and you're like with liquefy, they look nothing like they do in person. <laughs> it's become like yeah. this, like everything's just like moved and squished. I, and yeah, I actually watched a video where this person took a piece of pizza and they literally made it into a person. I love that. Like, I, that's, was, that would be a fantastic, like, that's the tutorial. How to make pizza out of a per it person. It looked like a real person, too, which was really weird. Um, it was like, yeah, it was just not, it was just, it was just really weird how they, it, like, the pepperonis they used as, like, the dress and everything like that, and they just blended and, sh and shaded on top, and that's it turned wild. out to be, like, you wouldn't even be able to tell that it was a pizza. And how they showed it was a reverse edit. So it showed it going backwards. Oh, that's uh, fun. It's like, dang, that's that's pretty good. Um, so right here, I'm just going to start doing my uh, camera raw. So I do add a little bit of clarity, which is that like HDR effect uh, that everybody does. But I don't like to overdo it. Um, keep it around like 10 normally or so. Yes, which um, I was just teaching a class on Lightroom and finally realized what the difference between texture and clarity sliders are. So texture... Uh, changes the individual smaller textures of the image. It will bring out the small textures more. Clarity increases the contrast of overall larger object textures. So if you're going for like larger texture and just want more contrast, use clarity. If you want more individual pieces, use texture. That's, that's a good tip. I had kind of just slid those until I'm like, sure, for the longest yeah, time. And I was yeah. like, all right, it's time to like actually research what these do. <laughs> the texture one is pretty new um, yep. compared to um, the other ones. I I like, I don't mind the texture one. I Grain is probably one of my favorite ones. Oh, I, I put know, grain on like, everything. Yeah. Uh, color, the uh, color mixer panel. This is my favorite panel. Yeah. Um, this is when like, I start to like truly experiment with things so you can get you know control your your yellows up here bring it back if you need to um you know mess around with your greens i don't know just i like how you have like total control over color at this point almost yep. um and if there's something like right we don't want the magentas or the reds that are in the flowers down there that were like, oh, we don't really like, them. like you can just be like, cool, now they're gone. Like it's so <laughs> helpful yeah. to keep things like cohesive and together. I'm just trying to see if I have any of these colors in here. I thought I just go like this just to see if I have yep. any of these colors. That's uh, the only way to do it. Like, I don't care if there's a correct way, that is the way to do it is grab the slider and just wiggle it until you see something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> until you find out what it's adjusting. Yes. Like, oh, okay, yeah, blue. Oh, there's a little bit of that on the underbelly. That's like a fun scavenger hunt. Yeah, you, you can start seeing like, uh, so this is like before we applied the filter and this is like after. So it kind of creates like a little bit, just boosts the highlights up a little bit. Yep. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so this is without our, our last few adjustments and this is with, and then from here it's all about just like experimenting and stuff. Uh, I like to do a burn and dodge um, layer kind of over top. Yep. Um, and that's and where you that, really get that light sculpting of creating things that aren't there by mm -hmm. just painting on. It's the it's like the equivalent of like doing like a makeup like highlight and contour where it's like, oh, you don't actually have cheekbones, but you do like this crazy makeup where it's like, oh, it looks like you have these crazy. <laughs> that's what we're doing to the photo. <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's basically just trying to make it look like every other photo out there, you know? Um, yep. And this is, this is the fun part that I think people think about when they think Photoshop is like, oh, it's just like clicking and clicking and clicking. And this part of the process is like, yes, it is that. Like that is <laughs> yeah. exactly what this is. Yes, this part is the clicking part. Um, and what we have um, on the layer above, if you guys missed that, it's just a new layer that's been set to a 50% gray um, and then changed to, I believe we have it on soft light. Um, and that yeah. way, when you burn and dodge, it will either lighten it or darken it. Um, so you don't have to worry about painting in any colors like whites or blacks. It's just dealing with the values. This is this is the ASMR stream that I want. And that it's just like a mic like on the mouse <laughs> and it's just quiet with like click, 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 click. Yeah, I, I, I could put like suppressor on, but I have like the clickiest keyboard. Like this thing is all just clicks. You can see yes. how high it is, like the high the keys are. And it's, I got the blue switches. So they're literally purposely loud. Yes, um, I definitely want that though, just like, this is not going to work because my, hold on. All right. We're going to give you guys an <laughs> ASMR dream. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's a nice like little, is that, are those like the red switch? It sounds like the red switches or something, or maybe. The, these, these are the keyboard that I found uh, in a box as I was moving. That, that that's, that, what these that's, are. This, that's what switches it. <laughs> that's funny. That's good. All right, so this is kind of like getting uh, pretty good. We can go like more intense, obviously, once you start having like most of your um, lighting like adjusted. I'm gonna just go in here, kind of like fixing some of this like light in here. And here again, it's all about just the look and feel. Um, they're like, ah, it feels like it should be like brighter here. Make it brighter. Oh, it feels like it should be darker. Make it darker. And you can always yeah. adjust those. So you just keep going until it feels right. And if you create like a new layer too, right? Um, like you can always just delete that layer, right? So if you think that you messed up by doing all that stuff, then you could just, you know, click delete. <laughs> no, thank no, thank you. Return yeah. to sender. <laughs> Like dang that, and traditional, yeah, it's a little bit harder. Uh, that's a lot of like stuff you gotta get rid of to go to go back. Um, but, but yeah, so this is like something that I would um, kind of like display. Um, you can add like a lot more stuff. We were gonna add like rocks in the background here, um, but we're kind of like we're we're getting close to the end there, and I don't want to like start to do all these other things and then have to be at the end where we're all like running and stuff. So I'm just going to do like some small, um, some small edits and stuff like that. Cool. On, on yeah. We've got about 20 minutes before artist spotlight. And then we are coming back to do a little bit more work. And so we'll continue uh, a little bit after. So we have a little bit of time, probably a half hour ish. Um, but we've got 20 minutes before our artist uh, spotlight Actually, countdown. Here, I'm going to show you a, a piece that I'm actually working on right now, um, mm. rather than uh, exclusive preview. Exclusive. Uh, so I'm working on a cow that's actually fat. You know, like the cow that goes over the moon. So the, uh, the only reference that I have for this is that song in Rent, where she's like talking about the cow like <laughs> jumping over the moon. That's all that I think right now is just like me. It, so I'm I'm slowly getting here. Um, actually, this one's pretty cool because this piece started out with just this picture. Oh my so gosh! I started, like actually building most of the uh, uh, minus the second cow there in the background there. I started designing like most of this stuff. I actually am flipping like my editing process a little bit, where I'm gonna start making kind of like characters like this in a sense. Um, I have a strawberry, so there's a bear. 
It's uh, literally a, str- a berry, like a strawberry. I, like it's a bear that's a straw. Oh, that's it's so good. Yeah, so a strawberry. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I like to do puns and stuff. Um, but I'm starting to edit like this where I can take out everything and just start using these characters on like shirts and like like apparel and stuff like that because I with rockets on the cow right like so that's why i'm gonna, I'm gonna do that um, so i'm kind of creating like these characters now uh I, i'm still working on this where i'm gonna put like some hosing that's gonna be uh plugged into like the nice jets here uh and then i'm gonna try and see if i can do like dripping some milk uh on the side and then merge it all together um but i thought it was kind of a cool concept of uh showing like um, layer organization and stuff and how simple it can really be um, to make all this it's it's not that hard um, it looks like it could take up a lot of time but really like it's just a few elements and clip masking those elements into um, those other objects using pixel squid and stuff uh, to help me out with the rock parts like I had the cow here rock apart uh, there's the backpack that goes right across. I had to warp this a lot because um, cows don't normally wear them. <laughs> so yeah. they're, there wasn't a lot of reference for like cow backpack. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's really, yeah, it's hard to find a cow backpack reference as well. Yes. So I just kind of like merged it using puppet warp into like place, which is really cool. Um, and then I, I just designed like a scene uh, around it. Um, and I'm gonna continue working on this piece um, a little uh, a little while now. When you post like at the end, I know that you post like the final image on Instagram. Do you post uh, like process along with that kind of a behind the scenes? Do you show people like how you've done it, any layer work or any of that? Normally I do that. So let's actually, I'll set that up um, with this one if it's possible. So what I normally do is I actually use my timeline here. So yes. I oh, this is the a, hack. Y'all, if you um, haven't used the timeline in Photoshop, this is the best part about Photoshop, I think. Like you can do video, you can do animation. Oh, it's and amazing. I feel like people don't know that this exists in Photoshop. So I'll hide all my layers here normally. Um, and I am going to just hide all these as I, I'm just setting up my my canvas right now. So you need to kind of like hide all these when you um, it, when you start a timeline so that you're not starting with all of them uh, active at the same time. Um, so let's start off with this as, as the first uh, frame. So we're going to do, uh, I'm gonna click the three squares down the bottom corner here just so it does it frame by frame. Uh, and then I set it to, um, Normally I set my first frame to five seconds with like a little fancy title, but we're going to skip that one and we're going to go to um, one second frame. So each each is going to be a frame uh, yep. and I'm going to create a new frame here. And basically I just uh, unhide things. Um, so I forgot to unhide all of this. So let me just. And this is great for making either you can render videos, you can do GIFs, you can do whatever, and you can either go by frame or you can do videos where you like fade in, you fade out, all that stuff. It's amazing. Actually, Photoshop is better at exporting videos, in my personal opinion, um, better at exporting videos than After Effects is. After Effects is great. But the file sizes are huge that come out of After Effects. If you export an After Effects, bring it into Photoshop, re-export it out of Photoshop, it actually goes down in size dramatically, like yep. dramatically. And um, here's the thing, you can also edit video in Photoshop. So I'll bring video into Photoshop and add adjustment layers, do my color mixing, do gradient mapping. You can do all of that to video in Photoshop and then export it. Um, and so if you're used to working in Photoshop with adjustment layers, bring your video in and do your adjustment layers in Photoshop and then export and then take it into whatever your timeline is. It's a good hack. Yeah, the, the timeline is super helpful. Um, I actually edited TV commercials using the timeline before. Nice. Um, I would skip the whole After Effects process because sometimes it does take like, <laughs> it, it takes a while to go through After Effects. It's a great software, but it's just huge. Um, and I'm so familiar with, with Photoshop that it's just easier for me to do it this way. 
Um, so right here is I'm going to yeah hide this and hide that now. Perfect. So I'm going to show you kind of what we've been doing with the timeline. Uh, so it starts off at zero. And if I click play here, now it's just going to show the layers building up. So this is what I attach to all of my pieces. It's just, it, it shows it kind of like editing itself in a sense. And then we'll start to add more elements um, once I start unhiding uh, all of these and it becomes like a full process video. And then this is all being designed literally on my, can like in my document right now. I'm not yep. moving all my files to a new document. I'm not exporting them all as PNGs and trying to align them that way. It's it's all being exported and done in the software. Yep. Um, and it's all done by basically just hiding and unhiding things. Yep. Uh, I use this for pitching my portfolio to clients uh, because I hate like sending a PDF where they have to like open an email. I'll do my portfolio and make it a frame GIF and be like, peace, 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 and set it to like two seconds for each one, just like this for frame animation, and then attach it like in the body of the email. So it's like, cool, you're gonna see my work right away. Um, and yeah, the timeline on Photoshop is world saver. Yeah, also, I... if you want to, this is such a specific thing. If you use Slack and you wanna make custom emojis, you can download like the Slack emojis and open them in Photoshop as a GIF and it will open this timeline so you can see each frame and then you can edit them. So like you can put your friend's face on like the party parrot if you want. You just edit <laughs> each frame and just track his face with the party parrot. So that's that's my favorite thing to do with timeline. Now we're going to see so many party, different versions of party yes. parrots. On, yes. Uh, I don't even, I, I personally use Discord more than Slack now. Uh, and you can do you can do custom emojis on, on Discord as well. So um, also a good place to utilize those custom emojis that you make that dancing parrot. Yes. Um, and I love that we're back into, we're back in our repository of like, these are all the layers, right? Yeah, these are yep. basically like the stuff that I tried to hide earlier. Um, that's why we have it just to make sure that everything is there. And that's great because we, when we moved to a destructive workflow, we kept it non-destructive by being like, here's just everything. Like everything's just going to sit down here and then we will be able to go back uh, and change it if we need to. Without opening up any other new yes. documents yes. Or, or anything. I normally do it in huge batches of, um, edits so that it's not just like you're not seeing one little small adjustment there's so many layers in here so i try and keep this the frame track around like 30 to 40 frames because i do export it as a one fps video for instagram it's yep. literally small file size it has no problems going through it can be one frame per second because it literally is um so that's uh that's how i kind of get around uh most of that stuff is i just only designed for that, those platforms. If I know that it's going further, then I'll definitely design it more professionally, but you have to keep in mind what it's for, who's yep. seeing it, where it's going, what it's being displayed on before you work with those like file sizes that are like, like huge, massive file sizes in your, yep. like, I don't know what to tell you. I got a little bit crazy at certain points. And um, uh, do you, uh, oh no, I started, I started the question without thinking of what the, and I had it and it went away. Um, <laughs> oh, do we still have our rulers from yesterday? That was uh, what I was going to ask. So we talked about this being full composition, but then cropping into the square on the Instagram feed. Um, and we set up rulers to make sure that like, it wasn't getting wonky. Right. So I, I removed the rulers last night when I went back into I figured, the, yep. the file only because, um, we actually didn't size it correctly the other day because my crop tool was not working. I haven't exited Photoshop since That's right. a few days ago. So um, yes. <laughs> my computer doesn't turn off. Um, so it, it's just been processing on the same powers basically right now. Um, but That's most of it, yeah. Of every designer like oh yeah, yeah illustrator's been open for seven days <laughs> so so i went in and i actually made it eight by by ten which is the size that i normally edit at so now it's actually eight by ten um and then we would um which basically takes up the the reason why i do it eight by ten is because it takes up the whole instagram feed no matter what you won't yep. see anybody else's content below yours you won't see anything else above um unless you're like midway through the image, which is weird. So not many people uh, look at your work, like just half scroll. Um, 
but that this is like the way basically to have it not crop at all when you're posting but it will unfortunately crop um for your feed overall uh because yep. the square version has to be displayed on your profile so just to get a view of that you normally just bring down like you know just some it doesn't have to be accurate at all but you just have to keep in mind that two sections do get cut off whether it be top and bottom and this is what people will see so this is yep. kind of good because if you like if i cover it with my hands um which i'm going like that um then <laughs> and it looks good to me yep. without cropping it that's the uh, ultimate, like there is a crop tool, but let's go ahead and make rulers and just do this. <laughs> yeah, because like, our hands are like the most, they're straight. Like It's true, <laughs> yeah, this is the straightest ruler that I could possibly have, <laughs> yeah. is just my wrist to my pinky. Yeah. And yes, happy Earth Day. Uh, thanks, friend. Yes, happy Earth Day, everyone. Happy We're here under the day, ocean. Everybody. We're thriving with some fish, with a pineapple. Um, yeah. It's just it's is super like, earthy. Earth Day, yeah, right here. Uh, this is perfect Earth Day con uh, content. How much more closer to Earth can you possibly get? That's true. Um, I, it's weird that when I think of Earth, I feel of like think of dirt. That I'm like, oh, it's like earthy. But it also could be like, yeah, it could be like at the bottom of the ocean. Why not? Isn't like the world? Doesn't the world have more water though than it does? Like, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Earth would basically, if I think of Earth, is water uh, with a little bit of dirt chunks here and there. Um, <laughs> it's water with dirt in it. That's, yeah, that's basically, the like there's just a pile of dirt that's in the way of the water so that it can't get around and like do it yes um so yeah we're just uh i uh, let me just figure out what frame i'm on okay i'm on this one and i'm just gonna keep uh basically just bringing up some of our uh elements here uh new frame our coloring here and then uh let's bring in our raw Ooh, i love then... seeing the liquify that just happened all of our tones after yeah the liquify was pretty cool um and then at the end i'll i'll set this one to like five seconds you know because you want your end one to be like the coolest part of your video um, yes or the beginning sometimes you want to capture people in the first three seconds so i only set this one normally to two or three seconds people only have a three second attention span you don't want to go anything over that um yep. you want it to switch at that point so that they're like oh okay re engaged um with your content so this oh. is what we basically just made is um i'm not doing anything uh, it's doing this all itself um but it basically just goes through the layers and it just starts um editing uh stuff i think i've added some extra frames in there accidentally i noticed that um but yeah it's like it's like we're watching the magic happen we don't even need sean anymore we just took the artist out Right. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining us today. We're just yeah, gonna, yeah, we're just gonna yeah. let this we play the for the next good. twenty that minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. It's so crazy. Um. And I actually sometimes will start if I'm doing an animation like this. Uh. I'll start in the middle, and then like loop back to the middle mm. if that makes sense. So like when they see it first, it's already got interesting going on. Smart. And then it's like, oh, you don't know when it started. You just think that you like hit it in late, but I'm actually starting in the middle so that you get like, you watch one and a half times or whatever. Sometimes I'll just put like a huge like text here that says like, this is going to be crazy. And that's like the first like frame or something, right? Cause that yep. actually gets people like interested. I mean, like it doesn't seem like it does, but it actually does. Like people are watching it like, yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. If you yep. tell them that it is. Um, <laughs> So much yeah. of design and creativity is telling people this is cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's like, I promise this is cool. I promise this is so cool. <laughs> so this is a, this is what we started with. This is our Adobe stock image. Um, and then this is what we created with Pixel Squid. Uh, keep in mind, we basically just used Pixel Squid. Um, I know that there could be a lot more um, adjustments. The bubbles could be like adjusted and all the lighting of that, but me to go in and, and adjust all the lighting of the bubbles would that would be a stream that all of you would be sleeping during so um so i yep. figured let's do the the fun stuff first so that you all have a good base of how to create something um so easy um uh, with some easy steps right i didn't do anything crazy uh like redraw a whole pineapple and or add all the textures and stuff I just use Pixel Squid and their 3D library, and uh, you can create stuff like this um, 
and it turned out it turned out really good like for 3d uh, it did and it, it looks real like it looks so real that's the thing that like we were talking earlier about the craziness of like somebody just modeled all these fish like it looks so photorealistic mm, and it gets a it, it could go you can keep going right that but you gotta know when to cut it sometimes i tell yep. every, all like the artists inside the the art club i'm just like you gotta know when to like stop because yep. then there's nothing for you to upgrade to um there's nothing yes. for you to, if you try and make it perfect at the start where are you gonna go after when you yep. post it i uh, actually have a, a a drawing that i bought from an artist uh and he had a sharpie and he did like a youtube video talking about editing and knowing when a piece is done and he kind of just kept talking through his thought process of like oh maybe we need some more here maybe we need something over here oh does it feel done yet like okay let's add more or whatever and it ended up just being a completely black sheet of paper that he like it just completely filled with the sharpie uh, and i was like <laughs> what a cool piece and so i bought the piece from him and i hang it on my wall and it's just that constant reminder of like at some point it has to be good enough or else it's just going to turn into like nothing yeah, and I want to actually show you a quick example of something that I worked on. Uh, I know that we're running um, out of time here, but it's just going to be so. Time's this, really flexible here. So this is my uh, original SpongeBob piece here. Um, Are you ready, kids, to see this? I I couldn't I couldn't not do it. So this is my first SpongeBob piece. So look at it. It's not that good, um, but to me at the time. This was great. I loved it. Um, I thought it was very well done. That <laughs> I, I did like an insane job. But all look at how dark this is. This is just all shadow. I basically just shadowed the whole thing, and I said, "Yeah, I'm a pro." The and then you go to what we just made. Like the comparison is just crazy. Yeah, uh, and that's this point. That's a two and a half year difference between those two chat uh, for context that it isn't this like, oh, cool. He's like, learn, it's just like happened. Like, no, like literally it was 177 weeks uh, between what we're doing now and what happened there. Yeah, so I thought, I, th I think it's really cool to see, like, that's what I'm saying, like, don't quit things perfect, right? At the start, and it still does well. Like this one did very like good for what yep. it was. Uh, like, I loved it. And this is when I was designing in Square and all that kind of stuff like that. So it was great. Um, I didn't but do, um, process videos anymore in this so I just uh I, you know I dedicated my pieces to people who uh, I uh, you know uh, I cared about and all that and I just showed a before photo yeah um, and then I the never, after I never did the after stuff but now when you go to my um more new kind of stuff um you if you go to um these you'll see that how it's all built up now uh, rather awesome. than me just showing the ending uh, and that's just using the timeline yeah um, it it felt like and we're gonna get to artist spotlight uh here in just a second but that that first piece the darkness of it all that i could think was like an announcer being like this summer join us under the <laughs> sea swim yeah. with the fishes like it, it, <laughs> it felt like the like horror version of a fun draw that's awesome yeah. um and yes yeah, so you can follow sean and all the social media we'll come back to yeah. that at the end let's hop over sean and do our artist spotlight i'm super excited uh for this one and i believe you are familiar with this person's work a little bit yes so we are grabbing uh fairy here uh which is um i met uh fairy kind of through adobe lives which is really cool um so it's kind of really fun the fact that i'm reviewing his work uh on adobe live um, right? so it's kind of a cool experience um but i've sensed like he's been a part of a lot of my projects and it's meant a lot to me. So, um, and I've sensed a lot of improvement in Ferry's work by just following Adobe lives, doing the creative challenges and all that kind of stuff. He has it become insanely good at understanding lighting and, and all that stuff. And it's just by just engaging with other artists, talking to them and, and being a true artist. Right. So that's why I'm excited to go over his work today. Um, because he's definitely a truly dedicated person. Um, yep. And I love seeing, crap. I love seeing projects on Behance that like have the big standout pieces, but then also have like the cover of like Photoshop daily creative challenge. Like I love seeing the process and the growth as well as like the result of that growth. So I love that you have both of those posted very. Yeah. It's nice that he has, uh, all these, uh, 
how it has it sorted. So you know, like this is probably original. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on one of these. Which one do you think I should click on first? They all look so good. I don't. Know Can what... we start like super at the bottom to see like where we started and then go Ooh. to like where we've right? Okay, so this would be his earliest post right here. So, um, this was probably before I started mentoring him a little bit. Um, yep. Uh, as you can, uh, really good, uh, like good start for sure. Definitely the blend got a, on that's um, really nice. A good uh, base image. Uh, it looks like these are multiple. Uh, this is multiple projects. Um, but very, very, very nice work. Um, so similar um, when it comes down to when we were talking about like depth and all that kind of stuff like that. So since this is an old piece, this is something that he probably didn't think about the time, but now he definitely does. I know for a fact that very definitely does now, but the clouds in the background, as you can notice that the, the statue is blurred here, right? Yep. So this being a fur, a more in the distance it should have also had a more intense blur in a sense um more and, intense than this yeah we talked about this and we talked about it today but then also in like a broader uh idea that it is laying down the foundations and then like eventually getting to the place where it's a finished piece right and i love seeing this in a long span of someone's work of seeing like the foundation is here like all the ideas are there and then we haven't looked at the new work but seeing what's there is like cool he's mm -hmm. gone and he's made those changes he's made those augments and started to process and make mm -hmm. those changes later on and has now learned and so i love looking at old stuff like this so mm -hmm. much and uh I'm assuming that this character was cut out at one point and added in here. Yep. So that the technique uh, of blurring your the lines around your mask and everything like that, since you've already masked out this person, just blur those lines even around the hair and all this kind of stuff. This is where you would see most of the blurs up in here, right? Yep. Uh, and Fairy, this is my challenge to you that I think could be interesting. Take some of this old stuff and redo it, like recomposite yeah. it with the knowledge that you have now. Um, and I think it will be actually surprising for you to see how far you've mm -hmm. come to be like, oh my goodness, like I made so many decisions that I would have made differently now. Um, I always think that's fun to revisit old projects and be like, oh, oh let's yeah. like reimagine this and see what happens. Yeah, re, uh, just or even just, you know, this create it in a different way. Uh, that's how I did my eye flower series. I have a lot of flowers with eyeballs in them, but I made them from like all these different perspectives. And that's just me noticing my improvement. Everybody thought that they were all different pieces, but that was just me trying to achieve what I was actually had in my, in my mind. Yep. Uh, this one's really well done. Um, yeah. The, the lighting... blend between the arm and the sword is really smooth. Yeah. This is uh, really well done. Um, it's it's nice how you also got some highlights in here showing that the the skin is raised, um, which is uh, that's a cool technique because this that would be how it would look right because if you have a bar going in your hand, it's, yeah, if there's it's like the there. Wolverine, yeah. Um, but this one's really well done. Um, I there's a lot. It's really sharp, like high quality. Um, yeah which is cool. So you work with really uh, high quality images, which is uh, nice. Oh, right, this, let's, yeah. Yeah, like that's gorgeous. Art. Which I'm sure now we have sky replacements for, it looks like there's a manual replacement there. Yeah. That we have sky replacements. Like it's crazy the technology that's come. Uh, let's jump up and look at so, some more of the recent work. Yeah. So we've got the context for what was. Let's see what is. So this looks like it's along the lines of that work so this is kind of the stuff that he's doing now and you could definitely sense that um you know blurring around your your edges and stuff like that here there's no more sharpness to it yep. so you can sense that he's you utilize that technique um up here would be a good area to uh utilize the the blurring but really good look at you added some in the I, foreground too you got a fish there you got yep. you know you got a lot more depth going on in your pictures now you're you're picturing it more as a 3d scene rather than a flat picture yep um, and we talked about that today of like adding adding those layers of depth and just adding 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 um i think this could even use you know one or two more layers yeah. of depth to really give it that uh because i love that fish, fish being like there. in your face yeah that's great 
yeah it's, it's really it all it looks super uh well laid i like how you've got it wrapping around the building though yep. which is nice the uh, lighting on that looks really nice too mm -hmm. rather than completely avoiding that curve there you've actually utilized it in a in a really creative way which is nice um oh oh he's got a there we go <gasps> this is what we love Color toning. Oh yeah. Oh, got wow, some shadows in there. Color, things. yeah, highlights. Overall adjust. Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's, That's fantastic. Good. It's crazy too because I think that like we've watched you do your whole process, but then seeing an image on someone that we don't get to watch the process, we're like, oh, it looks good. And then yeah. you watch the process, you're like, there are so many more layers and levels here <laughs> thought, than yeah, like what exactly. I thought was going on, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Like you want people to think that you didn't work on it at all. Um, and like, it, it's great. Like it's totally seamless. And then you see the process and you're like, oh, dang, they did a lot. I had no idea that this fish had that many tone layers going into it. It yep. was like, it was like stepping up all the colors and like little areas and stuff like that. Uh, so you could definitely tell that you've, uh, gone more advanced into like the adjustment layers the masking things cropping things out um the depth uh compared to your old pieces even the presentation right adding the the time lapse at the bottom of your behance profile like kudos that's cool that's that gets your piece out a, a little bit better right you know you're adding a different form of media to it you're adding something new you're, you're being fully transparent um it's really nice, but let, let's go into, I'm going to go into one of these um, creative challenges. Here. Yes, love right. the challenges, which again, we're going to plug the challenges. They happen right before this for Photoshop and right after this um, with Julia Masalska for Adobe um, Illustrator. Um, and then after that, stick around for our premiere stream. We're creating again, thumb stopping content. Oh. Uh, so stick around for that today at <laughs> 12 p.m. PST. Oh, so this is like a completely, this isn't even a composite. This is like a poster. Um, That's rad. The The masking on that is really good. Mm -hmm. One thing that could probably complement it as well is utilize your composite skills and still add the shadow maybe. Oh, yeah. Right, because that could almost make your poster have that depth right rather yep. than look so flat in a sense um but i'm learning like, very nice with the with the uh, elephant and everything like that and i really like uh, uh this kind of reminds me of my hometown because we literally had an elephant that was represented exactly like this as like a as a logo and everything so it's pretty cool um the, 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 like it was just el like elephant town where did where did you grow up I, I just I, I grew up in a, a small town in Ontario, um, but basically we had a zoo. They closed it. I'm not sure if you ever had a uh, closed it at one point. There's a crazy zoo owner, all that stuff. I'm not going to repeat it because it's not the best spotlight on our town. Yes. Um, but they had a, a an elephant and that's basically what everybody went for right was the elephant yep. like the, he was the star of the show in our parades and everything the elephant was always there santa claus parade the elephant was there so, i love that that's yeah. hilarious just like um, here's an elephant uh yeah sorry the the this is a really clean mask and i agree with the shadows of just like the depth on some of these even adding a little bit of an inner glow on the frame would give yeah. you a context and depth on that frame kind of separating the yellow and the inside it'd give you just like a little bit of depth even putting like another shadow them. inside the circle so that the the mm -hmm. the elephant goes mm -hmm. way into the background that's smart too yeah i do like the gradient so that you use um there that's yeah. really it's really calm, I find. I like looking at this this color selection here. It feels delicious. Like, I want to eat it. <laughs> it feels delicious. It is pretty cool, too. Um, I wish I could read that word, though, uh, behind the tiger. Oh, I guess it, I guess it's tiger, 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 tiger yep. all around. I guess I didn't need to read it. <laughs> I like this one. This is a pretty cool logo. You could definitely... You can almost like trace it out and make this an actual logo now, yeah. right? Like you vectorize it and make it into something that can represent a business. People actually might, uh, you know, buy into something like that because this is this is a pretty cool approach to a logo. Uh, maybe not right, tiger, tiger, tiger around it for the brand, but 
the yeah. brand name around it might be. And then you write it um, from here all the way to here. You stop it there and then leave this open. Um, and I love the masking on the whisker. And I'm guessing there was some mm -hmm. kind of refinement masking as the challenge because, well, the challenge probably was actually type on a path, but the masking on that whisker is so clean um, that I, I love that you've probably gone in there with some refined mask brushes. Um, so fantastic job on that. Even the fur, like you're getting those little tiny hairs and yeah, that's definitely like, what we want. It's not sharp, which is nice. Yeah, fluffy tiger. Fluffy. How do I get? Oh, there. Perfect. Okay. So, oh. I might have exited out of something. Uh, okay. Let me go on that again. Real quick. We're back. Oh, yes. The clicking. Hello, Anika. Welcome. Um, Afrosia, I think that you have uh, started the trend that we're about to do here. Everyone put your favorite animal in chat. Like, we find the emoji. We need to see your favorite animals. Um, I think here, I'm gonna drop mine in there. My favorite animal, of course, oh. is a tiny little hedgehog. So drop your favorite animal in chat uh, as we continue to- Mine's a penguin. Here. Did he yes. just upload these ones? Yeah, did this just happen? Like what's going <laughs> on? That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, how did we, like, I didn't see these ones yet. Um, yeah. These are probably from, are they from today? Are they from this week? If they're with Paul, then they're happening. Oh, see, okay, hold on, go back up. Uh, th that is, again, kind of like what we had done uh, in the last one, or in the that really old one that we looked at. And I don't know if this is composite or just toning, but like the toning on this one is improved from the last one, like the sky tones, the highlights that- I think it's sky replacement. Um, oh, yeah. Notice, um, it's all jagged, but look in the trees here, right? This is a completely different sky back here. Oh, yeah blue being uh the highlight over over here so yeah and fairy is this happening this... now sorry uh fairy, yeah, let us know I if you just uploaded these yeah because it looks like oh actually wait is there a posting date at the bottom let me let me just say so. oh yeah yeah he did he did i think just i will show nice fairy. Right. way to be on it like spot on just up he's like take it off take all my good stuff right, right here i want to show you uh this is a pretty cool concept um I, I like this, but this is a little bit strange to me. <laughs> like, hey, bro. I find that the, just the sizing might it, it is, is a little bit off, but this alone could have probably been a good composite, right? These these two together, adjusting some of your, your shadows and stuff here. This seems like a little bit of a meme. <laughs> They're just thrown in there on the side. Pretty good, though. Um, how would a whale sit? Uh, like, I guess a whale would sit like that. Yeah. Or would it just sit like just, just like a how a beached whale? Is like, does a whale have a waist? Whale? Yeah. <laughs> like, would that just be sitting for a whale? Dang, this is this is right. unknown. Uh, I'd love to see maybe a little bit of shadow on the mountain too, underneath that whale. True. Uh, yeah. So it looks like your sun's coming from up in the right hand corner. Maybe a little bit of shadow on the face of that mountain could give it like a really mm. good atmosphere. And uh, bouncing, yeah, bouncing those blacks out, right? This being your darkest black, this being darker than this. Um, yep. I think that you have a vignette over here too, making your, uh, your depth uh, interesting over here as well. Um, but this one's pretty cool. You nice. added a lot of depth to this, which is nice. Uh, yep. The music notes going on in the background is really cool. So uh, something that I learned as like a hack for creating that kind of like fading to the background is do two layers, right? One, the bottom one is crisp and then the top one just blur out and then do a uh, clip or a clipping mask on the top one and then do a black to white gradient. And it will it will like gradiate the blur so that you get this kind of effect of it gradually blurring to the background because it's basically like clipping the top layer with a blur. Let me show you something a little bit easier than than that whole process. There. <laughs> um, I love this. So here's the most complicated way to do it. Sean, yeah. please tell us an easier way. So grab the, the can here. We're just gonna uh, throw it on top because this isn't like a real asset or anything like that. Um, so if you're not adding any more adjustment layers to um, this 
piece or anything like that. Uh, let me just shrink it here for a second. Uh, you, you know for a fact that you you don't want to add anything else to it. Um, then you would basically just do your uh, your regular blur on it, right? And then you would kind of just blur it out uh, to the max or, or maybe this. And then on this, this is a, 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 like a filter Oh, yes, because you're a smart object. Yes, and then you just do it there. And That's you just so much easier. The, the eraser, <laughs> and then you just kind of like erase it. That's so much easier. <laughs> Same concept, but like so much easier. <laughs> yeah, just a lot, a lot more simplistic. It's gonna get you uh, a lot further, and you have total control over this, right? So you can like start moving around like your your blur and do the same thing that you you were doing before. See how the cans like yep clear. So if yes. you're watching this on replay, go ahead and just go back <laughs> to when I was talking and just delete it. Just delete it from your memory. <laughs> Like if yeah, YouTube, if we can get on just deleting that chunk, like put a copyright infringement on it and just straight just delete that. <laughs> yeah. just, we'll take it. So that would be a really easy way to uh, achieve a lot of this as well. Um, but really nice work. Uh, music, really cool. I like how you wrote it like in the same way, uh, working with type. One thing I would um, focus on is that your LUT layer over top of this um, adjusted the skin tones. Um, so if you look at it, see how there's like spots of gray on the neck and all that. So that's from your LUT layer, not not being able to tell the the, the, the color difference in between those two colors. Um, so it's separating them completely to the point where it's not fading your color into the other one anymore. Um, so you'll see that it's like really splotchy up in here in gray, but then in some parts it, it it's, it's fine and, and yep. all good. Um, but, but this also could have been because of camera raw and, and and adjusting those mixer levels as well. Yeah, but I think all the other overall tones are like so perfect for that. Like it just yeah. felt like it was grounded and like mm -hmm. really in there. Yeah, hundred percent. This is really cool. Um, it almost looks like you cut out different things out of a magazine. It definitely yeah. reminds me of like like something that Banksy would do. To be totally honest. Um, yeah. It reminds me a lot. So there's a photographer, his name's Jeremy Cowart, and he does a lot like this. Um, and it reminds me of that zone to where it's like kind of abstract, kind of fine art, but also still portrait. Like it's that perfect middle ground. Yeah, this one's actually really, really well done, Barry. Um, as an overall concept, I'm really digging this one. Um, I know it's random and you, uh, you probably don't even know how you can redo it again. Because <laughs> there's yes. just so many, so many textures, so many shapes. Stuff, but yeah this one's really cool um you should use this as your profile picture uh um, oh yeah that would be yeah i think that's rad that's a yeah that's a cool like profile picture that i think that that's really cool yeah uh, i love those times when you're in photoshop where you make a decision and you're like all right i'm gonna have to like merge down a layer or something and you're like all right this whole composition now is completely off the rails and we're just gonna run with it like let's go <laughs> yeah. yeah i know exactly where you are learning from right now. This is Paul Tranny. That it? is the Paul Tranny. That is <laughs> yeah. the Paul yeah. Tranny thing. Like I knew right away. I'm like, I think he's watching Paul's lives. Yeah. Uh, just based off of this. Pretty cool. Pretty nice. Um, another thing, uh, just your the elements that you used, uh, differentiate and tone. Uh, but you could be going for that, right? You could be going for like a postery kind of like abstract vibe, like. You can see how it's patchy again. There's just a layer style that you're using, I think, that's kind of like adding noise rather than um, adding anything else. Yeah, um, and I did like an iridescent challenge uh, oh, one okay. of the past few days. And so maybe you're trying to incorporate that kind of look here. And so I would almost balance it to like not be on the skin tones, but leave it on the jacket because it looks gorgeous on that jacket. Oh, yeah, the jacket um, looks but yeah, maybe pull it off of some of those skin tones. Yeah, that jacket looks dope. I want that jacket. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. I'm like, where, where do I get something like that? That's cool. Fair, if you could make a couple of those for us. Yeah, I... <laughs> just... so uh... You can put your logo on a two watermark. Go right out if you want. I'll wear some fairy gear. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll wear some fairy gear. Why not? <laughs> but I think it's pretty cool. Um, 
I know that Paul's like animating it. And I, I wonder if he would try to do like something similar, you know, like animating the growing flowers outside the face or something. I'm not sure if you saw Paul, one of Paul's recents where the flowers kind of just like grow out. Really cool. And I wonder if he was also trying to do something similar with After Effects in this case, um, like growing out of the face or it's separating. Um, but I think it's pretty, really well done. Um, the shading and shadows there look really good too on the face. You got like the, the shadows really, really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just the little flowers hitting kind of underneath. Um, and the it butterflies, looks like you can do some depth on them as oh, well. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Know, add some blur, maybe. Blur, cool idea. I mean, like they're good, but you know, it just uh, sometimes playing with that depth just brings a little bit more to the to the piece, and it makes it feel like a room rather than a, a, a poster. Yep, and maybe find things to put things in front of. So like, move that butterfly in front of the thumb, and then move the other one like behind the head a little bit, and it, it gives you that actual dimension mm -hmm. of like depth. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, so we have a few minutes left. Let's go ahead and look back at what we have done over the last few days. Uh, kind of look at where we started, where we ended, where people can find you. Give us the full rundown, Sean. So you can find me on all these links right here on the side, Sean Riken. Literally, if you search that on anything, you will be able to find me at any time. There's no other Sean Rikens out there, I don't think, yet. Uh, I don't know. So there's no competition with that name. <laughs> um, but which is good because, you know, sometimes having like the name John or something might be a little bit harder to work with. But I will show you our timeline, actually, because we created a video um, here showing the uh, entire process. Where'd it go? Um, oh, wait, there we go. I was hiding it. OK, so um, I actually think I have to hide it. Unhide this. There we go. It's not going to show it for some reason because it's hidden in here. There we go. Oh, it's done this for me too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it right um, now. It's like I think if you select all of those and then turn it back on, like shift through, shift click through all of those. Yeah. But it's only doing the front one. Oh, right? it's only doing the one. Which is just so weird okay so we started with this image <laughs> just quickly. Yes. So we started with this image and then we added a bunch of elements in there so we added you know a fish uh we designed the pineapple house using a bunch of pixel squid elements so we actually started with just the pineapple straight up we cut off the bottom like it was just like we were in the kitchen and we put a door on it some windows you know make it look like that spongebob aesthetic and then we um started adding elements around it um to create more of a depth so we put some bubbles in there for some effects uh we put some plants up front and we started adding fish around um the canvas uh then we got to uh this point here where we had uh, a bunch of uh element like all of our elements in place and took it into uh, camera raw here and we created ourselves a composite we gave uh, it a little bit of zazz yeah gave it a little bit of zazz uh, and, so it started off with nothing used a huge 3d library called pixel squid um, and we created a whole scene um, starting with literally just a blue like nothingness um, so it's cool um, the fact that you uh, have access to all these tools and resources and stuff through this 3D library. Library is massive um, and it's an official Photoshop plugin. So it's in the extent, like the Photoshop extensions. Yep. Just search Pixel Squid. It's, all it's actually right down here. There's a link oh, right below yep. us that you can right go below click on to get it. Perfect. Um, you also can follow along with Sean's work um, and you can stick around here all day for Adobe Live. We have great content coming to you. Julia Masalska is coming up next with some uh, Illustrator stuff. And then we're moving into creating thumb stopping content uh, a little bit later today at noon. <laughs> so stick around for all those. Sean, thanks for hanging out with us. Everyone, happy Earth Day. Go pick up some trash um, and we'll see you next time on Adobe Live. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>